Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today's episode is dedicated to bringing some of these ideas together. You know, on my podcast, I've talked about many different topics. Reality Transurfing, Neville Goddard, The Law of Attraction. I've gone through Joe Dispenza's teachings. And sometimes on some of the different videos that I've had, or podcasts, I've had questions about the consistency of these teachings, saying, this this contradicts with this, or this contradicts with that. And I also have an intention also for future episodes. I want to start combining some of these things. For instance, I'd love to combine some of the transurfing stuff with Neville Goddard stuff. Before I do that, I wanted to dedicate a short episode to bringing some of these ideas together for the people that are watching or listening. So I've dedicated most of my episodes to reality transurfing, a number of episodes to the law of one a number of episodes to Neville Goddard. And I have a background in neuro-linguistic programming. A lot of my meditations are using neuro-linguistic programming techniques. I'm fascinated by quantum physics, neurology, neuroscience. And what I'm trying to say is they all fit together. Starting with a fundamental understanding the reality that we are in through quantum physics is a good place to start. Go and check out previous episodes that I've done, quantum physics and consciousness. But the key point to understand is on a quantum level, the more that we understand the quantum nature of reality, looking at quantum physics, quantum is designated as a term for a certain size of particle. So looking at the very small world, we see through the double slit experiment that the observer plays a specific role in the creation of reality. Particles are collapsed from waves by our very observation. So the question is, do these, do these concepts contradict? And so let's look at them a little bit separately and then try to bring these together a little bit. Neville Goddard goes to the soul. It's a very simple teaching. He has some really great creative techniques. But a lot of this is, is underlying a belief system. And if you look at the basics of what we've taught so far with Neville Goddard, is an understanding of states that in order to draw the reality that you want, you don't attract it to you. You enter into a state. That's what Neville Goddard is saying is that your imagination is God and that your own wonderful imagination is the way that he describes it. When we have an imagine, we imagine something in our mind. It's not our mind just being creative. It's not us just, Oh, I'm going to imagine this particular thing or that thing. Imagine for a second that your imagination is just your inter is your interface God. And that, that, that imagination is something that's real. It's like you're putting your glasses on, you're seeing, or you're putting your binoculars on and you're seeing something. Sometimes it's crazy. So understanding that the imagination is our power is the beginning teaching of Neville Goddard that that what we think of as God is a separate thing. This this dude with a long beard sitting on a chair is not the functioning way to look at God if you want to create your reality. That, that God is in everything. God is in the chair that you're sitting in. It's in the clothes on in every single particle and atom, every breath of air, the darkness and light, everything. God is our own wonderful imagination. When we imagine different possibilities, that is God. So when we talk about reality transurfing, one of the fundamental tenets of reality transurfing is quantum physics. It's written by a quantum physicist. It's taking the underlying many worlds interpretation theory that's talked about in physics, which is the basis that there 
parallel realities that exist that branch off with each decision that we make. Right now, there's unlimited versions of you. There's the lawyer version of you, the football player version of you, and all of these different realities. Now, I'm not saying they're infinite, but I, but they're pretty darn close. In fact, what I would say is if we were to look out at all the parallel realities for you, a lot of them would line up in the same thing. A lot of the decisions you have remade over and over again. Now, reality transurfing brings out the concept of the space of variations, the alternative space. It's a quantum field, which is what Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about. Quasi talks about in his book, he calls it the all mind. It's discussed in almost all of the literature. And for, for Neville Goddard, it's your imagination. When we access our imagination, we are accessing this alternative space. So right now you can leave your house or apartment and you can take a left, you can take a right, you can go straight. And each of those has a whole branch of realities that are ready for you. Imagine that every level of space all around you has a recording of all all the possible variant possibilities. So there's a level of space where you walk through that space. Okay. And so there are multiple various realities that exist all the time. If you start with that fundamental concept, the idea that that, that right now there are multiple versions of you, you don't necessarily have to believe this But using it as a working model will be effective in helping you to understand how your reality is created, how it's imagined. So what what I'm saying is happening with the law of attraction is when you focus on something and you bring that into you, you're actually focusing on a parallel reality where that thing exists and you're bringing it to you. Now, I think there's two different kinds of law of attraction that people get confused with. There's a part of our brain that's really good at finding things that's not about finding realities, just just part of the survival mechanism of our brain. If you start looking for apples, you'll see the apples. It's not like you created the apples out of thin air, but you'll see them. I think that this particular part of the brain is unique because it helps us in how we maneuver through these realities. When we talk about reality transurfing, it helps us to understand this concept and how to maneuver through these realities. Now, the law of attraction is fundamental to everything. There is a post on the transurfing group trying to compare the law of attraction. And in many ways, the law of attraction and reality transurfing and Neville Goddard are all different pendulums. Pendulum is another concept that's created in reality transurfing. A pendulum is an independent energy entity that occurs when multiple people express thoughts or energy towards a certain object. For instance, Coca-Cola is a pendulum. Disney is a pendulum. And pendulums have their own consciousness or mind and can pull energy from you. And they are they're in service to your energy. They just use your energy. So transurfing helps us to understand the concept of pendulums. So in many ways, just as a side note, law of attraction, Neville Goddard, reality transurfing, law of one, star seeds, all of it is pendulums. And in many ways are using similar concepts to do them. Okay. So let's try to see where there's some common ground in some of this. In my opinion, the law of attraction is kind of like the source code. It's the underlying source code that's running the computer. We work through an operating system. We have software programs that we use to help us maneuver this operating system. The operating system is is fundamental and it works every time. Like attracts like. The more you focus on something, the more of it that you get. It will come to you. But the dynamics of this, once anybody that has been introduced to the law of attraction takes it seriously and really starts to study it, it ends up being a lot more complicated than people think. We think thousands of thoughts throughout the day. 
And so it's not as simple as sitting and meditating for 10 minutes and thinking about one thing. And then we are attracting that because then for another two hour or 23 hours and 50 minutes, we are not, we're thinking opposite thoughts. So what transurfing does is it gives us, us a program and a system to use the law of attraction in a way that's effective and works. And what Neville Goddard does is and helps us, it is, gives us a very powerful and persuasive way to enter into states. And by going into these states, we're accessing the alternative space. We're accessing the space of variations in our human imagination. And then simply by accessing these states, we start to align with these different realities. Listen to my episode, my interview, Cynthia Sue Larson and quantum jumping. So what's happening is quantum jumping. People are jumping into new realities. Now look at the science of parallel of, of quantum. Actually look at the science of atoms and electrons and when they when they can see an electron jump and do something called a quantum jump meaning it moves to another orbit it happens through energy when it gets a lot of energy it jumps it doesn't just slide over so in many cases you're not going to just slide over to a reality that's why the neville goddard technique is so powerful because you can you can jump into a reality by using the technique but also by integrating the idea of revision when you have something happen that's outside of the reality that you want, you go back and tune in to a revised setting and that pulls you back to the reality that you want. By doing revisions and by doing, by manifesting, especially during subconscious, when our, when our mind is more attached to that layer, which is the space of variations, we can move into those realities. Dr. Joe Dispenza is talking about this the same way. Dr. Joe Dispenza is talking about moving into realities. Now, the key to moving into these realities is learning how, as Dr. Joe explains, to move into a void where all possibilities are available to you. That's why meditation is so powerful. That's why in yoga, the emphasis on Shiva, which is nothingness, the void. That's why there's this emphasis. If we can reach the, the void, We open ourselves up to the source of all things and we have a greater imagination of what's possible to us. Your imagination is going to be limited by what you bring in to your imagination. So if you're only imagining one particular person that you want or one particular path, then all those other branches of of imagination, which are God himself or herself, are limited and squelched off. So what we get with the reality transurfing system is a daily technique that you can apply understanding that the world is a mirror. And so you're seeing things reflected back to you. We're seeing this in quantum physics. We're seeing that there may be mirror universes and that there is a principle of reflection. According to Jude Curvan in her book, the cosmic hologram, we see things reflect back to us. But the thing that reality transurfing brings in is the concept of importance and balancing forces. So as we have said before, if you've ever wanted something really, really bad, those are the things that are the toughest to get. It's always the thing that we playfully want, but we kind of let go. And there's an emphasis in the law of attraction community with coaches and learning how to let go. And that's understandable. Transurfing brings into the model the idea of importance. And the reason that this is all consistent is that you have Neville Goddard saying you have to enter the state from the wish fulfilled. Well, if you were in, if your goal had already been achieved, it wouldn't be as important because it's already been achieved. So there's no way for you to assume the state of the wish fulfilled if you're creating importance on this thing that you want because that's not the state of the wish fulfilled. Okay? Now, there is a discussion based on Neville that everybody is you pushed out. And by using Neville, we can imagine complete changes and we can bring specific people into our life. Some of that is possible. And I have used some of that, those techniques. But the thing, the concept that transurfing brings into that is when you manipulate other people, human beings, there are balancing forces. You may be able, in, in a negative way, meaning if you bring, manipulate somebody for your own means, 
for yourself. You may be able to attract them. You may be able to bring them into your life, but it will be temporary. There will be balancing forces. By bringing into the consideration of balancing forces, you're integrating our understanding of the way that nature is in, in, in reality is actually created. You see that water comes to level. You see that energy always comes to balance. And so there will be a balance, a responding response to if, if you try to pull somebody into your life, there will be a push. Particularly when you try to manipulate somebody when you do it lovingly, you'll have people lovingly helping you. So you start a process where you start to help other people in your mind and you'll start to see reflections of that. The, the, everybody as you pushed out is a reflection of the, the mirror universe principle that right now, whatever you're thinking is reflected back to you. And so you meet people that are, re- are reflections of, of your, what's going on inside of you. That's why it's everybody you pushed out. You are not those people. Neville Goddard is not saying you are those people, but you are everybody pushed out because you are, you're seeing a reflection. You're bringing people into your life that are a reflection of you. Okay. I got another comment on a video that frailing in reality transurfing contradicts the idea of the specific person. It's a technique. Frailing is a technique that you can use to get to, to, to actually meet your specific person. Check out my episode on frailing. It's just the idea that if you want to motivate, influence, or gain the rapport of another individual, You're not going to do that by forcing the rapport on them. It's by focusing on them and focusing on their needs and focusing on their wants. And by trying to, as Neville talks about, lovingly imagining for them, finding out what their goals are and helping them to achieve their goals. And then you can bring, then they will, they'll they'll have a reason. They'll they'll see you as somebody that can help them in their life. And the balancing force is a reflection back to you. So if you look at what the the only other part of it that's also consistent is Dr. Joe has clearly shown how important it is to unify the heart and mind and the heart and mind in doing studies and research, they have found when the heart is is coherent with the brain, it's kind of like a light that oscillates. And then once it oscillates at, at a certain frequency and it comes together, it can become like a laser and very powerful. Vadim Zeeland emphasizes the idea of unifying the heart and mind on a theoretical level. Dr. Joe is talking about it on a scientific level. And Neville Goddard is talking about it on the feeling level. So the biggest lesson that Neville consistently talks about is feeling it real. The feeling is the secret. The feeling of your body coming from the wish fulfilled, the feeling of what you want is that the assumption of the feeling of what you want that feeling is your heart. That feeling, when he's talking about that feeling, he's talking about linking into your heart just as much because the heart is really at the core of your feelings. It's also to do with your belly and some other parts of your body. But really, if when you talk about feelings, you're, you're talking about linking up your heart and mind. You can see what you want, but Neville always was saying the feeling is the secret. So somebody that's trying to manifest just directly from visualizations in their mind hasn't linked up their heart. They haven't linked up their feelings. Okay. The thing that, that transurfing does is allows you to consider the, where your energy is going. And in particular, the, the idea that you're, sometimes your imagination can be hijacked by pendulums. These are all parts of your imagination. And so it gives you a way of understanding what you're imagining and how to differentiate your imagination. And it also allows you to guide you towards what you want. All of these things come together perfectly. There may be some, some contradictions that you want to bring up. And I will argue with you that you have a fundamental misunderstanding of this stuff. I have met fundamentalist Christians that are better manifestors than the best law of attraction coaches. And it's all because of, of the process, not the theory. 
We get stuck oftentimes in the theoretical underpinnings of reality creation. And it's not about the theory. It's an experience. We're bringing and attracting experiences into our life. And so a lot of this teaching is trying to tell you to move away from the theory. That is what Neville Goddard is saying to move away from the theory. And that's what in many ways Zealand is doing. He's giving you some things to consider along the way. As you go along this process, reducing importance and understanding pendulums, because those things would not be a part of the wish fulfilled. So that's just a a beginning idea of how these things link together. Another interesting link, Dr. Joe talk always activates the back of the head during his energy meditations. And in, in trans surfing, we, we, we do the plat activation and in Neville Goddard is mentioning that, that the consciousness is stuck in the back of the head. So I will soon be trying to come up with a meditation that, that uses the Neville Goddard technique in conjunction with the plat. But before I did that, I wanted to have an episode where I kind of discussed and bounced these topics along. The law of one is obviously fundamentally what Neville Goddard is talking about, that we all come from one thought, that God is one thought. And in law of one is explaining, well, we don't just merge back into this energy consciousness. There's something that happens along the way that the creator is using to understand himself. We're using the imagination to understand ourselves. These are all things and thoughts of God, the good and the bad. The law of one is what happens after we start to move into our power and become gods. There is levels of consciousness and understanding in that because God is great and complex and gigantic and beyond anything that we can imagine at this point in time. So I don't believe that there's a contradiction with this stuff. Yoga talks about chakras. Transurfing talks about energy centers. They all fit together. So if you think that there's a particular distinction or contradiction, then let me know. When I see somebody post, oh man, I used to be totally into Neville, man, but now I'm totally into trans surfing and I'd never have anything to do with Neville. Okay, if that's what you want, but you're still talking about similar subjects. My mind is open and I cannot wait until the next great book comes out that describes a new technique because that's what I know is that I'm fundamentally learning all the time and that this is both simple and complicated at the same time. It's fun to talk about. It's fun to experiment with. And so if you think there's a contradiction between this stuff, then let me know. And what contradictions are you seeing people use? One of the things that always bothered me when I started to learn law of attraction was what I call the Chinese, the Chinese finger toy. It was that you, anytime that you thought of something that you really wanted too much, then, oh, you're thinking from lack consciousness, right? And there is something to that, but importance and reducing importance also reduces that. Reality Transurfing is talks about something called target slides, which is a form of met, a visualization in how to visualize. Visualizing after the goal has been achieved and seeing what somebody says to you, it's called a target slide. So Neville Goddard is an advanced transurfer teaching how to do target slides. Now there's frames, which is another thing that you can add on to speed up the process that Neville gives. Frames in transurfing means just adding instant little pictures that can guide you along the way. Also, visualizing from the the wish fulfilled in increments can be powerful. You may want to win the lottery and you want to enjoy all the things that are wonderful about you winning the lottery. But there's some process you have to go buy the ticket. So... They're arguing, hey, visualize yourself buying the ticket. If you need to get uh, a degree in law, you want to be a lawyer and you're celebrating, then, then, then it's okay to visualize passing the test. It's just an acknowledgement. There are steps towards whatever goal that you want to achieve. And it takes you away from some of the magical thinking, but it also, in using and applying that, 
speeds up the process because you are still powerful and whatever you focus on you create and so by focusing on those increments it is also powerful so essentially when you look at neurolinguistic programming and they talk about rescripting that's also the same as revising it's also talking ab- about using feeling is the secret by and by looking at different submodalities in visualizing something being aware of all of the different senses which is what Neville Goddard is talking about all of this stuff matches and we can learn from all of this stuff and i and i think we can put together a grand theory as we continue to do this i'm not going to say that i'm one thing or another i want to bring the best of it all just like i'm sitting in the kitchen and i'm picking and choosing different ingredients for whatever i want and that's what we're doing now if there is something in particular that you would like for me to research i'd be happy to give it a shot and see if it's it, it works into this it's amazing how the mind is able to make things consistent that aren't that are inconsistent so i'm aware of my own biases and desire for this stuff to be consistent as we see in politics all the time where people can take two completely things that are dis- and dissociate from them so i am still a student and i am use th- these comments please as a laboratory for we can discuss what all this stuff fits together and how it fits together is neville consistent with the reality transurfing with joe dispenza with the law of one law of attraction I think they are consistent and by expanding my own awareness of all of these concepts we can expand the possibilities that are available to us. I hope that helps. So let me know if you have any questions and I can explore further some of the variances between these theories. In any case, it's always a joy when you sh- share this time with me. All episodes of the Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. Welcome to the Reality Revolution.